Mrs. Buchanan up yet? I'm afraid not, sir. Well, uh, would you mind if I waited in the library on the off chance that she wakes up soon? It's uh, 10 o'clock already. Yes, of course, sir. There I you think. are. I'll have coffee sent in, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, Heron. Sir. How was uh, Mrs. Buchanan last night? I, I know she wasn't speaking with anyone. Well, she was still awake around 11.30 when I retired, and she requested that the phones be disconnected. It's my guess that she didn't fall asleep until the wee hours, so. Yeah, sir. Probably, I... Must admit, I hardly get any sleep myself worrying about her. Heron, would you mind knocking on her door to see that she's all right? Mrs. Buchanan's usually up by now. Uh, I'm sure she won't mind if I let her know that you're here, sir. Thank you. Heron? Heron, uh, was up checking on Vicky. How are you? Hey, what are you doing? Playing hooky from work? No, not quite. Briggs told me I didn't have to come until later on this afternoon, so we're just sitting around, wondering what I was going to do all day. Oh, come on, I got some coffee ready. Oh. Um. Ah. Thanks. It's okay. Well, how are you? Ah, you're still thinking about Tina and the pregnancy. No, I'm not thinking of Tina anymore. I realized at first I had a few doubts as to whether or not she was capable of telling me a lie about something I thought was real important, but... I no longer have any doubts. She could do it. And end the story. Well, I'm glad you made up your mind, but maybe it would be a good idea to check with her doctor. I'll leave that to you. Did you talk to Clint? Yes, I did. He said that Vicky was incredible when she was helping the kids move out last night. Oh, he also said he was worried about him because she didn't show how upset she really was. I'm worried about her, too. I, I don't know what... Good morning. Hey, Mel. Hi, Kate. Hi. Hi. <laughs> hey, where'd you get my old hat? Look at that. You left that in Tina's suite. Oh, what did she do? She tracked you down so you can give it to me? No, not exactly. The hotel manager gave it to me. Tina's instructions. Apparently, she checked out yesterday, left town, and no forwarding address. Listen, Dante, even if we do find a will, including Holden, how do we know that Don Alonso doesn't have another one stashed away in some lawyer's office somewhere? There's a very nice thing about Don Alonso. He didn't trust lawyers. Some years ago, he lost a great deal of money for precisely that reason. Well, considering how friendly he was to you, I find it surprising that you'd know anything at all about him. Well, we used to be until I got into the cocaine smuggling business. That stupid old man, he never was really interested in wealth. Let me tell you, Dante, I've had a few doubts myself. But the chances of anyone finding me down here are just about zero. Uh-huh. Well, Max, I must say I am impressed by the way you spend <laughs> money. Woo! But you know, uh, I am going to... Uh, Check to make sure there are indeed separate bedrooms. Uh huh. Oh, I can't believe this. A few weeks ago, I thought my dream was dead in the dust, and then I got staked, met you. Staked? 
Uh, the silver mine, you know, with all the jewelry, all the earrings, the bracelets gushing forth. What do you want to do first, rest up, or uh, you want to do a little sightseeing before we head out to the ranch? No, I want to take a tour of the entire city. Oh, and uh, by the way, the uh, separate bedrooms and separate locks will be just fine. Anything to please you, Mrs. Holden? <laughs> Would you stop that? Look, I'm just going to go freshen up, okay? Okay. Mrs. Max Holden. Real solid ring to that. She's gone for good. Court, she took everything. She left no forwarding address. Look, you know what this is all about. She's told everyone that she's pregnant, right? So she's so embarrassed about that, she knows that we're eventually going to find out the truth. So right. she just took off before she's totally humiliated. Right. And if she decides to come back, this way she can pretend that she had a miscarriage. Exactly. That's all there is. Court, I am delighted that you're taking it this way. Hey, Ma, come on. It's a good riddance. Are you kidding me? No more phone calls in the middle of the night. No more chasing me around and bumping into her every time I turn around. No more tricks or traps to try to get me back. No, I'm a free man now, Ma. She is out of my life for good, and she's never coming back. And I'm, I'm real happy about that. Cord, I know that you're in pain, and I know that you love Tina very much. But once again, this is proof of the kind of person that Tina really is. But, look, maybe now you can get on with your life, huh? Yeah. Well, I have an appointment. Uh, look, Ma, thanks for bringing by my hat, and thanks for the news. She left you this, too. Oh, boy. Great, looks like pictures. You want me just to take it and throw no, it away? No, Ma, I can handle whatever there is in this envelope. All right, well, look, I'll be back later, so... If you need me, you call, okay? Thanks, Ma. You know, I'm starting to get real mad at myself for being affected by everything that woman does to me. Cord, don't be so hard on yourself. She was the love of your life. You can't expect her to die that easily. Yeah, well, right now, it's all mixed up with the anger and the frustration of the betrayals. I, I don't know how I could even feel any more love for her. You can feel... You're a human being with emotions and feelings. You're not some robot. You can't turn things like that on and off at will. All right, uh... There is some kind of surprise in here. I'm just going to open up the envelope and get it over with. Cord Roberts. Is that you? <laughs> oh, Lord. Steve. Steve Holden, how you doing, man? Excuse me. <laughs> that would take a long talk. What? What the hell are you doing in Landview, Pennsylvania? Well. Oh! 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 <laughs> Well, I certainly feel better. Oh, and it shows. <laughs> uh, I was just checking out this map here so I get my bearings. We don't get lost. You know, I'm really starting to feel up again about this whole thing. And I think a good night's sleep really did it. I mean, that sleep on the airplane, that was the first time I think I haven't cried myself into unconsciousness. Tina, I swear to you again on my beloved mother's grave that I was put on this earth to wipe away your blues and fill your days and nights with fun and contentment. <laughs> Well, somewhere deep inside of me, I must believe that, or else I would not have done this very crazy thing here. Ah, uh, now, come And you on. know what? I also think that somebody up above must not hate me, or else they would not have put you into my life to uh, help cheer me up. That's what I told you. It's destiny, baby. <laughs> now, come on. See the city first, then our new home. Hmm? Oh, and I want to pick up something for Don Alonzo, something from Max and Tina Holden. I sure hope I like him as much as you do. Oh, you will. He's one of the finest... Men you're ever gonna meet. Ah. Oh, uh, here he is. Oh, Joey forgot his little bear. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, I had a real crisis last night at bedtime when he discovered it. I promised him I'd come over this morning and pick up old Fitzpatrick so he'd be there when he got home today. How did the transition go last night? How did Vicky hold up? 
Oh, you mean you don't know? I figured you'd be over here five seconds after I drove out of the driveway. No, no. I telephoned five seconds after you drove out of the driveway. Oh. Vicky wasn't speaking with anyone last night. Not even you? Well, maybe there's hope for her after all. So what are you going to do? Just uh, camp out here until she comes down and kind of force her to see you? Okay, Buchanan, I know exactly how you feel about me. And I know about your paranoid fantasies that you managed to convince yourself are actually true. So you don't have to keep reminding me every time we meet. I have a good memory. Hmm. As opposed to my wife, who, if, if she had her memory back, she would drop you in a flat second. And what are you going to do? Show up here every day to put her under more and more pressure. I have a right to show up here. I'm still married to her, Dennison, remember? So why don't you knock it off? The last thing in the world Vicky needs right now is to see us in a fight. Don't tell me what to do or what not to do. Or what my wife needs or doesn't need. Tom, I don't want to yell. I don't want to argue. I don't want to fight. I just stopped by to pick up some things for the kids and... Uh, Little Fitzpatrick for little Joey. I just stopped by to give Vicky some support and the sympathetic ear she needs uh, to talk. Yes, well, I suppose she does need that. I also plan to suggest that we make an appointment with Dr. Krause to have her memory worked on. Now, you may not believe this, Clint, but I want to see her back and complete as a whole woman, regardless of how it affects you or me. Excuse me. Uh... Oh, Heron. Heron. I got what I came for, and I was just on my way, uh, just on my way out. Think you still asleep? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I, I knocked twice, but there's no response. I see. Well, would you tell her I stopped by to pick up some things, and uh, I'll have the boys call as soon as they come home from school. Huh? You take care. You too, son. Uh, would you like to wait any longer, Mr. Dennison? Yes, Heron, I'd like to give her another hour. If she's not up by then, I want to wake her up. Um, I want to make sure that she is uh, sleeping and not, uh, not physically ill from all the heartbreak. Yes, sir. Someone I want you to meet. Kate, Steve Holden. Hi. Nice to meet you, man. You too. Steve and I would go way back. We were like little kids. You know, our mothers used to be best friends back in El Paso. Then his family moved away. And you recognize each other? Well, we hooked up about, <laughs> what, three years ago on the rodeo circuit. I didn't last long. Not like a Bronco buster here. <laughs> I heard those stories. I'm surprised either one of you can walk. <laughs> oh, I still got the aches and the pains. <laughs> well, hey, come on. Hey, have a seat here. Uh, what's going on? What are you doing here? Well, chasing after my brother Max. Max? Is he in town, too? Well, he was until yesterday. I'm surprised he didn't look you up. No, I, I haven't seen him. Uh, what's he up to? What's he want here? Well, I'm not sure. But I guess he got what he wanted. A nice, rich lady to buy him a ranch in Buenos Aires. Uh, hold on a minute. I, I think I'm a couple chapters behind. I thought your family had this great little ranch back in Texas. Yeah, well, we did. A failing one. Debt-ridden. It killed Pa, and then Ma died about six months ago, so the whole oh. place is on the market. I think I could pay off all my debts, but it looks like I'm starting over. What are you going to do, go join your brother? Hell no, I wasn't even invited. Well, I guess the big question then is, what are you going to do? Any ideas? Jimmy, I looked through his room and found absolutely nothing. Therefore, it is safe to assume that he left no will, and you know what that means, my friend? That the Bella Vista is our ranch, partner. Terrific. <laughs> we'll go back to my ranch and we'll have a little sip of cognac and wait to hear that horrible news about my old neighbor, my poor friend, Don Alonso. And if this Max Holden gives us any trouble, we'll take care of him the same way, all right? Okay, all right? That is a half an hour. I, I really shouldn't be interfering with your work. No, you really shouldn't. But I'm glad you are. You know, after you left, I've just been kicking myself and barging in and uh, getting angry about Jamie. We settled that. Well, here we are on the verge of a relationship. Hey, thought we crossed the verge. <laughs> huh? Quarreling about Jamie is what did my marriage in with Charles. I don't want us to be finished on 
the same sorry subject, so I, I, I don't want to talk about him anymore. You don't? Absolutely. Mum's the word? Uh, yeah. Promise? Mm. Good. Well, okay, so, um, have you spoken to Vicky? <laughs> I tried last night, she was asleep, and then I called this morning, and she was asleep, so I left a message. I have a funny feeling she's ignoring me, uh -huh. avoiding me. Sometimes clients write their attorneys off when they lose the case. Well, but see, Vicky and I were very close in, on this ordeal, and I... How could you avoid it? Uh, listen, I still think Judge Guernsey was very wise in his decision to turn down the divorce petition, give Clint the kiss. No way he's getting involved in the foreseeable future. If you're referring to Vicky's involvement with Tom Dennison, I can assure you he's not using the amnesia to further her dependence on him. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Because that just means the Buchanans will be together again as soon as Vicky regains her memory. Doesn't sound to me like you're very distant on this case either. I, no, no, I'm not. I mean, I've known him for a long time. Besides, I mean, that's the real pleasure in this profession, isn't it? Your relationship with your clients. I know it's what attracted me to the law. How about you? Oh, I don't know. Well, maybe it was something that happened to me in high school. Yeah. Do you really want to hear this? Of course I do. Well, I... Um... I was accidentally on this debating team in high school, and they asked me to sort of asked us to parallel a political situation in the country and I was defending someone who was being pro persecuted and it was just very exhilarating lightning struck Judith Russell Rossovich Rossovich yeah that's my father's family name he changed it when he came to this country oh, anyway the, the point of it is that um, there I was defending this person who was being prosecuted and I felt like I was helping them and it was it was it was fabulous feeling it was I felt like I had a gift you did have a gift so I guess it was just after law school that you fell in love with Charles huh? <laughs> yeah we were very mismatched it was all wrong from the beginning but then there was this very intense uh, attraction between us mm. well you heard the rest so then I was a public defender for about 10 minutes but his mother hated it. So there was Charles with a lot of friends and colleagues who, was, who were always getting involved with the law and having trouble. So I was defending these people. And I guess I lost my, my sight of my goal. Lucky for me, you didn't end up in corporate law. Elizabeth and Charles tried that. They oh. it would clean me up, but I absolutely refused. So now I am defending people I want to defend. I guess I made the right decision. Yeah, sure did. Well, enough about me. What do you think of me? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tell me more about yourself. Oh, honey, it ain't quite so uh, idyllic. Afraid my first burning passion to defend the underprivileged gave way to something else. See, I, I began to see the law as a stepping stone to politics, and politics as a stepping stone to power. Wait a minute, that doesn't fit in with the image of the man I'm beginning to know. Must have been another guy, I suppose. I mean, I went off the deep end for Dorian Lord. She just fed every ounce of ambition I had. I ran for governor a few years. I was elected. Oh, wait a minute, I remember that. We were in Washington. Wait, weren't you asked to resign? Yeah matter of a shady campaign contribution mm. but i learned i'm i'm no dummy i mean i never again it wasn't long after that cassie came into our lives and... <sighs> strange how you can evolve into someone else so i guess we both ended up in situations that we never dreamt of like now two former adversaries looking at each other something other than hostility. I don't know what I'm going to do now, Cord. Uh, up until my conversation with Max yesterday, I thought I would continue the family spread, but now... Hey, look, why don't you stick around and leave you for a little bit? I tried and like it. Maybe it'll be the same for you. Well, I can't blame you if you met your wife here. Oh, I'm... No, no uh, Kate's not, not my wife. Uh, wife. See, I'm separated right now. We're headed for a divorce. Oh, hey, sorry for the mistake. Well, maybe I'll meet a nice young lady like uh, your friend, Kate. <laughs> yeah, maybe you will. <laughs> hey, look, the people here are really great. A lot of things to do here, too. Well, that's good, because I need to find work. Yeah? Well, what can you do? 
Well, I don't know. I can build most anything, fix most anything, including electrical stuff, plumbing. Well, I tell you what, we'll put our ear to the ground. Maybe we'll come up with something for you. Yeah. You two are fantastic. <laughs> okay. Hey, maybe I better tell the desk that I'm not checking out today, make sure I still got a room. Well, I tell you what, Kate and I are staying here, too, so if you need anything, you just give us a call. It's terrific. Hey, good bumping into you again, yeah, Carter. You too. Very nice to meet you, Kate. You, too. Bye-bye. Huh. <sighs> nice guy. Yeah. Yeah, I hope he sticks around. Yeah. Uh... Where was it? I was about to look at these, wasn't I? Well, you don't have to. Yes, I do have to. Oh, boy. I've never seen Tina look lovelier. Not much makeup on, simple clothes. Looks beautiful. Yeah. These are shots from when we were in El Paso. She just wanted me to remember how we met and how we first fell in love. And you did. Do you want to be alone? No. Kate, I don't want to be alone. I, uh, I want to get her out of my mind is what I want. She... She didn't even say goodbye, Kate. She just took off. She left these pictures so that I would... I would sit here and I would miss her. But it worked. No. It didn't work. I, I don't miss her. I miss... And I miss the woman... in these pictures. The one who was so lonely and and beautiful and the whole world was just misunderstanding right and left. See, I, I, I guess I, uh, I thought I could save her and change her and make her realize that, that she could be happy without having the a full bank account. But I didn't change her. <laughs> I think I'm the one who changed. I don't have the same insights I used to have or outlooks. I'm not as open as I used to be. I, I, I'm becoming real cynical now and uh, that is trusting. I'm not... of bull. I've been through this whole thing with you, Cord. And you haven't changed. You're still open. You're still trusting. If you weren't, we wouldn't be so close. So you're telling me I, I haven't learned a damn thing from this, right? That that's perfect. That's just no, what I no, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that you're gonna be a little more cautious next time you give your heart away. You'll think about it and you'll make sure that person you give it to is worthy of it. You're just uh, a little more mature and a little less naive, that's all. Well, I wish Tina would realize that. That way she'd stop trying to do stuff like this. <laughs> you know, I, I bet she hasn't even left town. I bet she's sitting over there at the airport waiting for me to come strolling in there to, to drag her back home away from everything and <laughs> she'll probably be over there for about a week before she gives in. Thank you. Sure.
crowded, Dean. Wow. Presidential Palace. Is that where Ava Perón stood to wave to her admiring crowd? Yeah, it is. You know, if ever there was a woman in history that I could identify with, it was... You gotta be kidding. Oh. <laughs> I'll be just a minute. All right. Well, don't you look nice? Thanks. So, how are you? Was it was it difficult when you had to take the children away from Vicky? No, no. Actually, she handled it very well. Made them feel that everything was okay. Oh well, I'm surprised. But but how wonderful! I guess it made it easier, huh? Why are you surprised? My wife's not off the wall. Oh, I, I beg your pardon. I didn't mean that. That is what you think, though, isn't it? I... I can't believe this. You... You think I lied on the stand, don't you? You think I made that whole story up to help you win custody? That isn't what I said. Well, then... Why else are you being so... so angry and so sarcastic? Maria... Friends, I'm... I'm somebody who cares about you. I'm... I'm on your side. I mean, I came over here to help you... With whatever your needs may be, babysitting or shopping or mm. however I could help. Uh-huh. You did call it a story on the stand, though, didn't you? I mean, we have talked about this before, Maria. Uh, yes. Oh, yes, I did. I colored it. But only to spare you pain. Because Vicky was, was even more derogatory, even more explicit about her feelings for Tom. If I had told the absolute truth on that stand, you would have gone crazy and caused a scene that would have, would have guaranteed you to lose custody. I'm sorry. I, uh, I had to ask. I don't know who to trust anymore, Maria. I, I don't know who's on my side and who isn't. I feel guilty. Part of me feels guilty because of what I did, and I know that what I did is right. Part of me is depressed, and the rest of me is just damned angry. I assume that Tom is with Vicky today. <laughs> How do you guess that? Yeah, he's with Vicky today. Yeah, I stopped by there to, uh, to see her. He was uh, sitting there waiting for her to wake up. You know, the man almost sounds sincere when he says he wants to help her get her memory back. 
Yeah. And all he does is hover around her and try to come off so she'll think he's indispensable. He's like a damn buzzer just waiting to pick on the bones of our marriage. Now what? What did I say? It all just became so clear. That's how people view me. Not that I give a damn about them, but you. you you must think that I am like Tom Dennison, like some some buzzard hovering and just no. trying to make myself indispensable. No, no, no. Maria, you're a friend. I'm not a friend. I love you, Clint. Don't you know that by now? Listen. Was she up yet? Uh, afraid not, sir. Well, that does it. Uh, you have a key, I suppose. And I'm not sure if the room is even locked, sir. Well, in that case, you and I are going to go up there, and if she isn't up, we're going to kick that door in. Uh, uh, Mr. Dennis? Uh, Heron, you know the pressure Mrs. Buchanan's been under lately? Yes, sir. Well, all right, then. Maybe, just maybe, last night in despair, she... Uh, no, not Mrs. Buchanan. Well, we have to find out, don't we? Well, well uh, it's all right, Heron. I understand. You stay here. I'll go. Yes, sir. Well, here we have Christopher Columbus. I'm glad he came all the way from Italy to discover. Tell you what, you stand here and pose for me. I'm going to take your picture. <laughs> when I first came out to Buenos Aires, I was wandering around wondering what to do. I remember looking up at the statue and thinking, oh, Chris, he wasn't scared. So what if the world's flat, huh? Dream's a dream, right? You got to go for it. No worry about falling off the edge. Yeah, I guess you're right. Oh, Chris, here hasn't been around a gorgeous woman for a couple hundred years. You'll make his day, Jim. Hold it right there. Oh, real nice. I just kind of flip your hair back to it. Yeah, 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 just like that. Oh, girl, I love when you do that, boy. Oh, these guys are real nice. One more. Oh. Mortal is Chris Columbus, minus the pigeon droppings. You ready to take a drive out to Bella Vista? Uh, yeah, but don't you want to call Don Alonzo first? Oh, I think I want to surprise him with my arrival and my sexy new wife. <laughs> oh, my God. You didn't mean it. I mean it. I am in love with you, Clint. I have been for a while. I think... I think other people saw it before I even realized it myself. I never meant for it to happen again. I... You know, uh... Look, when Al died, you, you were lonely. You... Oh, no, it, it might have happened even if he were alive, because you and I were unfinished. And because for so many years, I, I dreamed about seeing you again, about being reunited. It's true that my love for you diminished and, and my love for Al did grow. But I, when I saw you again, I, I, I was just so shaken and... I don't know what to say. It's because you're still in love with Vicky. Because you won't let go of her, and now you're counting on these next six months for her to wake up and run into your arms again. You know that. Everybody knows that. I, I, I hope for your sake that, that she does regain her memory and you can have your family back. But I have my doubts. Clint, I've never done anything to hurt your marriage. I've loved you from a distance, and, and I only... I came around when I felt that you needed someone. You, you, you have. You've always been there, and I appreciate that, Maria, but the way we were when we were kids, uh, 
I don't feel that way about you anymore. I know that. Look, all I want is for you to, to take my feelings seriously and think about the fact that that I'm offering you a future of, of love and tenderness. If, if and when Vicky convinces you that it's really over, just know that I'm here for you, that's all. I'll... You know, I was horrified when I told you the truth. And now I'm so relieved. I'm not ashamed of my love for you, Bucky. There's nothing wrong about it. I'm sorry, Heron, to bother you, but just leave another message with all the other messages. Thanks. Nothing, huh? No, she's either supposedly in her room refusing to answer or in a deep sleep. No, I wouldn't blame her for wanting to hibernate for a while. No, she wouldn't do that. She wants to see her children or at least visit them on. Yeah. She probably doesn't want to talk to anyone right now. Now, don't worry so much. Vicky's a strong lady, in spite of all her emotional problems. It's funny. You know, for a moment this morning, I envied her amnesia. I'd like to have something to just block out all the horrors. Remember Jamie when he was eight years old or something? There I go, talking about Jamie again. Judith. You can't beat yourself for not being a superhuman creature and just put her own child out of her mind. You have to go on living, you know, best you can. Mm -hmm. Thank the stars above you have Kate. Mm -hmm. I thank every star in the sky that yeah. I have Kate. Intellectually, I know that you're right about what you're saying. It's just that I am so weary thinking about the pain Jamie makes me feel and so weary about wondering what I did wrong and this <laughs> must be so weary for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I want you to tell me what you're feeling about Jamie. I just want the privilege of once in a while stopping you. <laughs> and I, I can remind you that there are still some very happy things, things to smile at, like, oh, what is that song? I can't remember the song. What? What was I thought? Oh, fine. Oh. Romance. <laughs> With lots of kisses. <laughs> I changed the word. Oh, Herb. I would love that, but I, I think it's a little too much for me to handle right now. It depends on the guy. How understanding and wonderful and sensitive <laughs> and kind and bright he is and how well he can sing. <laughs> <laughs> you are such a tonic. If she didn't have so many appointments this afternoon, I'd whisk you away. We've got three minutes with... You're alive. Vicky. Vicky, it's Tom. Can you hear me? Vicky. Oh, God. Vicky. You're watching the totally outrageous Tina Lore Marathon. Stay tuned for another episode.